We're switching gears here a bit and we're gonna dive into the myocardium. So that is the cardiac muscle that is arguably the most important tissue type in the heart. So I wanna start with going a review, hopefully, of cardiac muscle and compare it to skeletal muscle, which you might know a little bit more about. So first of all, one thing that's similar between them. So what is the results of depolarization of muscle tissues? Remember, muscle tissues are excitable, meaning they have voltage-gated ion channels that can rapidly depolarize the cells. When those cells depolarize, what happens? Contraction, right? That's what muscles do. This excitation contraction coupling that you know and love where excitation causes contraction because these muscle cells have those contractile fibers. Okay, so and we'll talk about some different types of cardiac cells, but first start with what's similar between all, all these cells. What's cool about cardiac cells, can't help it, is they have the ability, um, some of them, the pacemaker ones, have the ability to spontaneously um, depolarize and contract they have a high frequency of the spontaneous depolarization. So we'll come back to that, but that's what's unique about cardiac muscle in terms of the excitation contraction coupling. Okay, so what's skeletal muscle, um, cardiac muscle? What do you see that's different? What's the same? Um, let's, let's talk about this. So cardiac muscle, unlike skeletal muscle, have one nucleus per cell. Remember, skeletal muscles are actually a bunch of cells fused together in development. So there's more than one nucleus in a single cell. This image here shows you can't even see a whole cell here. This is all one, one cell, piece of one cell. In the cardiac muscle, this here is one cell. I think that's one right there. By one, I'll tell you what that is, intercalcated disc, intercalated disc, sorry. So these are many different cells here. The cells are smaller and only have one nucleus. Um, they both have striations, which is how they contract. They're both gonna have these sarcomeres that um, are overlapping thick and thin filaments that contract, that allow for contraction. So sarcomeres are present. Um, <clears throat> What else about cardiac muscle? So let's, let's these things that I, these lines that I had separating a cell, these are the intercalated discs. These separate adjacent cells and connect them um, chemically, electrically, and physically. So it's, there's gap junctions in between here um, that allow ions to flow through. But we'll come back to this in more detail, but. So these are the intercalated discs that connect adjacent cardiac muscle cells. Skeletal muscles don't have those. These cardiac muscles are also branched. There's a really nice example right here. See how this kind of branches both ways here? There's another one right here. That branching is gonna be important for causing a um, unified contraction so that one signal in a small little node can be spread many different directions to have the whole heart contract at once. Skeletal mu cardiac muscle is also involuntary. It's a difference between skeletal muscle, so you don't decide to move your heart muscle, like you consciously control your skeletal muscle. And one more last thing, um, lots and lots of mitochondria. Of course, skeletal muscle also has lots of mitochondria, make lots of ATP, cardiac muscle even more. Um, they need to be able to contract over and over again, 70 times a minute, um, 60 minutes <laughs> an hour, 24 hours a day, 7 to 80 years, a lot, forever. They don't, it doesn't stop beating, right? If it does, if they stop being able to produce ATP, um, they aren't able to contract anymore, you, you die. Okay. Here's one more image of cardiac muscle cells with a few features zoomed in. First, um, mostly actually what I wanna talk about here is for, you can see some other like mitochondria, um, hopefully this 
kind of structures a little familiar here with the, you got your sarcomeres, um, sarcoplasmic reticulum, all that stuff. What I really want to show here is the intercalated discs. So here that they're a little bit darker than the, in the other image and then they're connected to each other. So this cell, cell one is connected to cell two by all the structures that are located in this intercalated disc. What are the structures? There's going to be gap junctions. These are going to electrically connect the two adjacent cells. So in here, this would be like cell one and cell two. So it's turned kind of on its side. Um, so ions can pass through here very quickly and that's gonna allow an action potential to pass quickly through. So again, the whole heart can contract at one time if we're electrically connected. There's also desmosomes. So these are, that's a Velcro that holds cells, adjacent cells together. This would be cell one and cell, is that cell? Cell two there. Um, that physically connect them together. That allows the atria really to contract as a unit and then the ventricles contract as a unit. Um, so we'll go into single muscles firing action potentials. Um, and then the two types of cardiac muscles are gonna have different action potential um, details, mechanisms.